right now a Nigerian civilian, one ordinary Nigerian is going to fly on a real rocket by Blue Origin. And it could be you. Huh? Have you ever thought about going to space? I want you to look at this. This is a document from Scientific American and it shows everyone who has ever been to space charted until the end of the year 2024. Let me show you something quickly. Each box here represents at least one person who has gone to space. And in the whole world, this is around 700 people. But almost all of them here were picked by governments or higher class and elite programs. Guess what? Take a look at this map. This is what all these squares look like on the map. Everyone who has gone to space. You can see the representation around everywhere except one place. So it's not for a celebrity, billionaire, pilot, or a scientist. It could just be any one of you watching this video right now. But why go to space? What is the point in all of this? This is Sam Hutchison and George Skrela. Both of them are founders of the Space Exploration and Research Agency, CERA, the same company that partnered with Blue Origin and reserved six seats aboard the New Shepard rocket to take everyday people to space. They'll help us understand what this all means. You know, we want to give Nigerians both the opportunity to fly and also to select who ultimately flies. Well, for Sarah, the, the one thing that we know is that over the last number of decades, there's only been about 700 people that have gone to space, all, almost all, if not all of which, been chosen by the institutions that are running those programs. The one thing that we're going to do here is disrupt that distant process to the entire population of a country to choose who the representative will be. You get room for six passengers, six astronauts, one of those astronauts could even be you. One seat aboard this rocket is meant for a Nigerian who you can vote. Sending a man to space being part of our national policy and you get to be the fellow man, male or female, who drives that, who is the face of that policy, I don't think we'll ever, the nation will ever forget you. Because that is Dr. Anne Agi. She's a Nigerian space lawyer and co-founder of the Lens Space Foundation. I even got to speak with Victor Hispana. I was in home when Sarah called me and it was like, oh my God, this is not real. This is too good to be real. And it was truly unbelievable for me. He was a regular citizen from Brazil who got chosen and actually went on their first mission to space. It's crazy that about 150 countries have never had an astronaut. I mean, look at the map I showed you earlier. See how almost blank the African continent is, but why? The history of Nigeria and space has been quite interesting. If you look at the world as a whole, our space program is still quite young. Can you guess when NASA started? 1958, two years before Nigeria gained independence. I'm not even joking. They opened for business on October 1st, 1958, exactly two years before our independence. October 1st, 1960. And by the way, I went to NASA HQ and it was amazing. Russia even started exploration in October of 1957. What is going on with October? China started to explore with rockets in the early 1960s and 70s, so pretty early. Nigeria's National Space Research and Development Agency, NASDA, only launched in 1999, which is years after it had taken many other countries to send their first satellite, send the first manned space flight, and for some, to send their first deep space or lunar orbit flights and many more missions. Enter Nigeria's first communication satellite. Nightcomsat 1. According to the BBC, this was a multi-million dollar Nigerian satellite launched in May of 2007. It was Chinese built and it cost us around $340 million at the time, but it shut down 18 months later due to power supply and for it not to cause damage to other satellites in orbit. To the ordinary Nigerian, it may sound far away and that's because most times Nigerians, when they think of space, what they think about is the astronauts that went to the moon. The Armstrong is what everybody really remembers. But space is not just about going to celestial objects. When the ordinary Nigerian asks how space is relevant for them, in that space, you have um, countries and nations and corporations launching satellites, satellites that help with transport, air transport, satellites that help with even agriculture. So space is how we are even able to talk. You're in Lagos, I presume, uh, and I'm in Calabar, but here we are conversing, that's space technology. And that is true. Space is our everyday life here in Nigeria. Whether we're communicating using DSTV, satellite TV, internet, or more recently, Starlink, which is what I've been using. And I even made a comprehensive video about how it works. Space 
is so important. But the truth is that space exploration is expensive. Even with cheaper rockets, these missions cost NASA $25 billion back then, or around $250 billion in today's money. Space exploration is still either heavily backed by governments of the countries I just mentioned, or billionaires. Think Elon Musk with SpaceX, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, and of course, Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin. One would wonder why they are even doing this. What is really up there? One thing is many asteroids, especially metallic ones, are rich in nickel ion and can have higher concentrations of it than the typical ores we find here on Earth. Gold also came from space. There's massive solar energy in space because it's above our atmosphere. Sunlight is about 1,361 watts per square meter, and they are even calling it space-based solar power. It's, it's all good, but it's quite expensive, and they show us what the future could look like if we invest in research and development in this area and many other areas that space helps humanity. Things that are changing in the space industry. One is the availability of launch to space, just in terms of more launch providers, um, and also the cost. And obviously we have a relationship with Blue Origin um, who have the New Shepard rocket. The Blue Origin New Shepard is a reusable rocket. What this means is that it goes up. Start, two, one, ignition. And it comes back down. And it can be reused instead of being disposed. With the New Shepard, Blue Origin has flown a number of missions. In 2021, their first human flight, the NS-16, had the founder, Jeff Bezos, on the spacecraft. Jeff Bezos and the crew, among whom were his brother and one of the youngest and oldest people to go up there to space, were carried above the Karman line and they landed back safely. Wait, what is the Karman line? In simple terms, this is the line that is considered as going to space. The line is 100 kilometers above sea level and is the real boundary. So crossing this line means that you've gone to space. This is really the edge of space and it is the altitude where the air gets so thin that wings cannot make enough lift. This is where people start to float. I saw this article that also puts this line at around 10 kilometers within the 80 kilometer range and I'll link it below. All my sources are linked below, by the way, but let's just say it's around 100 kilometers above sea level. Nigeria has since launched its communication satellite, the Nigecom Sat 1R, which still operates today. And recently, the first Nigerian to go to space just went like three months ago in July of 2025 in the same Blue Origin rocket. This is what he had to say on his interview with Arise News. Fact, most people are never gonna be able to go through what you went through. What was it actually like? It's very, very an exciting moment. Uh, I feel like a soul was leaving the body. And when you get yourself from the bed, remove the bed uh, from where you sit down, then the next thing you're going to see is that you start floating. Everybody was floating. You know, they ask you to pay $2 million, I think it's worth it. Wow, I wish I went to space. <laughs> So, Mr. Aul Abisalis has traveled the world as a politician and a lawyer, and he became the first Nigerian to go to space. Right now, you can actually go to space because of this new agency called Sarah. So, what exactly are they doing here? What do you mean you can just click a link, sign up on a Telegram mini app, and get voted? And if you win, you get selected and trained to go to space? Well, Fisayo, as you can imagine, it takes a lot of optimism hope and positivity to, to see a site on the internet that says, click this link and you know, you've got a chance to go to space. In a number of the markets, we've been looking for partners that in some cases commercial, in, com in some cases, you know, national agencies who can help uh, give the program credibility. One of the sort of main areas of cooperation with NASRA is, is simply to raise awareness of this opportunity and that it's real. They've also partnered with our Space Research and Development Agency, the NASDAQ, and they've signed a memorandum of understanding. So people get to understand the legitimacy of this. It is actually happening, and it could really be an opportunity of a lifetime for someone. We have a novel proposition, which is that ordinary people can go to space. We have a novel way of doing it, which is that you download a, a, a mini app in Telegram, create a profile, and encourage others to come in and support your campaign. And as a result, that's a lot for people to chew on. It's a lot for people to believe, you know, could be possible, could be real. While we were talking, and I said, oh, we've been looking for anyone from an African country. This is our idea. We want to purchase a seat for someone to go into space we are. They told me the name of the organization. We are all about democratizing space. So, and I remember the first question I asked them is, why will you do that? Why why will you tell me you want to spend your money? I mean, I'm involved in the space sector, buying a seat 
it's not a this, as we say, it's not cheap. So how can you just tell me that's what you just want to do? There must be a catch somewhere. Remember teasing them. What's the downside? So what are they exactly doing? This is not an orbital flight. An orbital flight will be significantly more expensive because one, the civilian astronauts will have to stay in space longer. It will require more resources to stay there longer. So the training to stay in that zero gravity state is much more than the training required to just go over the command line for a few minutes. The reason for this is of course safety. It's a day's flight. Okay, so it's not that they're going to be in zero gravity for a week or so, but why send just almost anyone, an everyday person? Why not just send a scientist, a pilot, or an engineer? I said, has always been. We're excited about that because if you send an engineer, if you send a scientist, if you send a pilot, and they're extremely technical, and they're there to do a very specific job, and if you ask them how the mission went, then they'll give you an answer that is technical, engineering, or about the flight. The flight was excellent. You know, the experiment was performed perfectly. When we say everyone, we really do mean everyone. And like, you know, for your audience, you know, there's no cheating here. What we found with Victor is that because we were able to send an everyday person, his experience of being in space and of the universe and of the planet was that of, of an everyday person. And when he came back down, he was able to communicate what that experience was, not in technical terms, not in scientific terms, but terms. And that got a lot of young people very excited. I also got to ask Victor, the astronaut from Brazil, who got chosen to go to space on their first mission. How did it actually feel? What change did you see in yourself going through with this? It, it was very unexpected to, to be selected, you know? It was... Uh, like uh, too far from me. I'm from Brazil. I don't have a background in space exploration. I never thought um, something like that was possible. There's a lot of dreamers uh, dreaming to go into space in this rocket. I'm the living example of this. I became braver. Uh, before I was afraid just going roller coaster, for example. I, I don't have excuses anymore when I go. This is funny, but this, this is real. I was doing canyoning. I will never do it, you know? But after this, I, I, I literally became braver. It, it's like, okay, I need to face my, my fears every day. This is interesting. The, the interesting thing for Sayo is that after he, he performed his flight, we got a call from him and he was under no obligation to do this. And he said, guys, I got to quit my job. <laughs> I got to work in space. You know, can I come and work alongside you guys to help make this next mission possible? So there you have it. I'll have the website linked in the description below. Signing up will take anyone who applies to a Telegram mini app with a final vote recorded on chain so everyone can see it. The reason they are doing it this way is that the last time that they did it, it was a random selection that got Victor going to space. And this time they wanted it to be community based and they wanted people to get to decide who goes to space. I think it's just so crazy that it could be one of you watching this video right now that goes to space. Sarah is aiming to do this every year and they want people to get used to a space agency where you can just click a link, download a Telegram mini app and apply to vote and get the person that is voted to go to space. Go for it. Your life will change. Your life will be totally, totally changed. When Victor of Brazil, you know, took the chance, when nobody knew, because we, we are even a bit lucky. We are listening to Sam and Josh do it for another time. At the time, uh, Victor had never heard of them. So, I mean, the fear of what if the thing falls down? What if this guy is like fraud? What if they are just lying to me? What if, you know? But he took that leap of faith and, and, and he paid off. So, Victor will tell you that his life has changed totally. So, for any Nigerian who is listening to me now, I will encourage you all. Please apply. Your life will never be the same. If those who apply for Big Brother Niger, their lives change. How much more you who is in the tech sector? See, eh, if you're Nigerian and you go to space, I think you should speak your local language when you get there. I think it would just be like mind-blowing to just hear like your are in space or evil in space. I think it'd be cool. Would you want to go to space? I made a fun post on X asking this question and I got some of the most hilarious comments. Let me know your own thoughts in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the very next one.